In the eerie twilight of the quaint town in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, a terrifying entity emerges from the depths of an abandoned TNT plant. The puzzling monstrosity stands tall with a 10-foot wingspan that casts sinister shadows. The creature's eyes blaze in otherworldly red, searing into the souls of those unfortunate enough to cross this creature's path. But the Mothman is so much more than just a mere urban legend. So much more than a fake cryptid or a humanoid creature. It is the embodiment of our deepest fears. A creature that defies explanation and can change how you feel about everything you thought you knew about the world. Mothman is one of the most seen and most widely reported cryptids in the world. And the Mothman reported sightings have often increased in cities right before a disaster. For example, why were the sightings of the Mothman rapidly increasing right up until the Silver Bridge Collapse, Point Pleasant's largest disaster in history? Why were these Mothman sightings also simultaneously reported with other paranormal phenomenon? In this chilling odyssey, we plunge into the abyss, tracing the sinister origins, reliving the bone-chilling encounters, and surrendering to the grip of the Mothman. For the Mothman still watches, its ominous presence over the realm of the uncanny and the unhallowed. My name is Kayla, this is Mothman, and we are Cauldron Convos, baby! I'm in charge of the smoke machine today, and I'm gonna hit it with my foot. What up, Woo! bitches? We're back, finally! We'd like to thank HalloweenCostumes.com! Thank you, HalloweenCostumes.com, for sending us so many awesome Halloween costumes, including this exclusive Mothman costume. And by exclusive, I mean you can only get it at HalloweenCostumes.com. I love costumes in general, but... You gotta appreciate a good Mothman but costume. But a cryptid costume on top of just a Halloween oh, costume? Oh, man. Unreal. This is I saw unreal. this on the website, and I was like, oh my god, that's the one I need to get. That's the one. She's the one. And if you are getting ready to shop early for Halloween for costumes or decorations, you can go to HalloweenCostumes.com and use the code Kayla. Oh my God. Kayla Cauldron for 15% off your entire order. Or you can just click the link in our description below. It'll just bring you there. It'll just show you all the goodies. It'll take 15% off your cart right there. So thank you for the costumes, HalloweenCostumes.com. Oh my God, our favorite month season is approaching. It's almost spooky season. So if you are a fan of the paranormal, the spooky, make sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll be posting every single week, sometimes multiple times a week, and we have an audio podcast as well. If you want all the spooky good stuff before Halloween, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now let's start at the very beginning of Mothman. The first sighting ever was in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, as we said before. Point Pleasant was established before 1750. They don't know exactly when, but Point Pleasant is within Mason County, West Virginia, which is basically west of West Virginia, the west part of West Virginia. And Point Pleasant was originally a Shawnee village. So Native American tribe, the Shawnees. The Shawnee. Shawnee. They're not the Shawnees. They don't got knees. <laughs> but in the Battle of Point Pleasant in 1774, over 1,000 Virginia militiamen defeated a force of an Algonquin confederation of Shawnee and Mingo warriors led by a Shawnee chief named Chief Cornstalk. That's a bitchin' name. That is, Chief Cornstalk. Nothing too significant uh, happens in Point Pleasant, West Virginia until the Mothman sightings. But I do want to point out a popular superstition that historian Virgil Lewis pointed out before we get into the Mothman sightings. The superstition was that, quote, because of the fiendish murder of Cornstalk there in 1777, the place was laid under a curse for a hundred years. Now, it was over a hundred years later where the Mothman uh, came alive or I guess was just seen in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. It was 189 years exactly, but still, was the Mothman, you know, a curse because of the murder of Chief Cornstalk? Who knows? That's pretty funny. It's like people hate moths. And Chief <laughs> Cornstalk's people were like, yo, fuck you. I'm sending a, a, a human-sized moth to come terrorize you. That's funny. But the first sighting was in November 1966, when two young couples, Dickie and Linda Maxwell and Steve and Mary Millette, told police that they saw a large white creature whose eyes glowed red, standing at the side of the road near the, quote, TNT area, which was the site of a former World War II munitions plant. And this description is where 
this costume from Halloween.com comes in. Halloweencostumes.com. Halloween costume. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> Who to has Halloween.com? Who has that URL? That's a good URL. Someone's holding it ransom, probably. It's like Whitehouse.com. Someone has that. Yeah, it was. It was not affiliated with the White House. Yeah, I'm sure that would be .gov. Yeah, it was a, a naughty website. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay. it's pretty clever honestly anyway linda described the creature as a slender muscular man she was like damn why can't dicky look like this moth man <laughs> about seven feet tall with white wings and said that she was unable to discern its face due to the hypnotic effect of its eyes so essentially it looked human mostly besides the fact that it was slightly bigger wings huge red glowing eyes they panicked and started driving away, but the Mothman allegedly flew at them, after them, screeching. I'm already scared when, like, a freaking lanternfly this big flies near my head, but imagine a seven-foot bug. Oof. After this incident of the double-date duo uh, Mothman sighting, the local paper then ran the story of the Mothman. Imagine how crazy it would be reading that in your paper, just like in a small town in West Virginia. You're just reading, you know, having some coffee, some flapjacks maybe with your wife, uh, Chantel. And all of a sudden, you just read that a giant Mothman. Yeah, was just no, lingering. there's like a seven foot moth just running around the TNT factory. <laughs> like what a what a clipping in the news. I wonder if people still have that newspaper article. Probably. If you do, send me a picture. Or just send me the copy. <laughs> I want it. I want to sell it. I'm just kidding. That'd be cool to frame. It would be cool. Anyway, after it was reported in the paper, other people started reporting sightings of Mothman, though it wasn't called Mothman quite yet. For example, two volunteer firemen actually reported seeing the creature and pointed out that it was a, quote, large bird with red eyes. So even two firemen who, you know, probably have some status and reputation to uphold in Point Pleasant, West Virginia... Um, they're even saying that they've seen this creature, you know? They got something to lose. I mean, everyone's got something to lose. But a fireman? Like, you're part of the yeah, town, no, baby. Yeah, no, that's a credible source. It's like the whole UAP thing. Like, I didn't really believe it till like, those Air Force guys got mm. involved. I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But the county sheriff, George, said he believed the sightings were an unusually large heron, which is a type of bird. And we'll get into the bird, you know... The bird excuses that people like throwing around in a little bit. Do I look like a bird? <laughs> Does this look like a heron to you? <laughs> a seven foot heron? Your wing is getting in my video. I'm just kidding. It's fine. A wildlife biologist told reporters that descriptions and sightings all fit the sandhill crane, which is a large American crane, almost as tall as a man with a seven foot wingspan, featuring circles of reddish coloring around its eyes. He pointed out that the bird could have wandered out of its migration route and therefore was unrecognized at first because it was not native to the region. But I feel like what migration route was this bird trying to go on? And would the people in that city? No, that's dumb. Yeah. I'm Does like... this thing look like a bird, bro? <laughs> I don't think I look like a bird. And honestly, all these biologists always have such lame ass excuses for cryptids. I mean, okay, Loch Ness, different story. Plesiosaurs definitely extinct, but you know, I'm not a bird. Yeah, exactly. They say that the sandhill cranes were migrating. They can grow to five feet tall and they have red markings on their heads. But even the biggest crane doesn't seem to be big enough to, you know, explain Mothman and the sightings that people have had in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. What other types of birds or other species do people like to say Mothman was? Some claim that Mothman was just an unusually large barn owl. Because barn owls' eyes can shine red, but barn owls can't get as big as what the reports of Mothman say. Again, similar to the People crane. do oftentimes, you know, exaggerate reports. And I think if it were to be some sort of bird, it's not going to be a crane. Cranes are lanky. Cranes are thin. Mm -hmm. Barn owls now look at me. You know, if I have my grandma in the room, she doesn't have her glasses on. She'd be like, oh, are you an owl? Oh, I see. <laughs> like, nah, bitch, I'm Mothman. <laughs> I'm Mothman, Granny. Another theory is that when humans are in motion, it's actually hard for us to determine what size things are. So the people that saw Mothman might have thought that, you know, it was a seven-foot creature, but because they were driving in the car and because the thing was flying overhead, 
perhaps they mistook and, you know, the brain does something, wonky things, and you can't actually grasp the size of the object. Are my wings crooked right now? It's fine. No, are they? I'm self-conscious of my wings. Why? It's fine. Okay, thank you. I don't think anyone's worried about that. Another theory that people say is that, or another, what's the, what should I say? Excuse people make? No, another hypothesis. Okay, another hypothesis of what Mothman is, beside it being a cryptid. Excuse. <laughs> is, well, not it is. It, I guess the, yeah, the excuse of it is that the human memory is a little unreliable. Our brains will sometimes create memories to fit false memories shared by other people. Now, we talk about this in our Time Slips podcast. Mm-hmm. Another excuse is the mass hallucination, mass hysteria excuse, or hypothesis, as you like to say. Another similarity with the time slip. I feel like all of these are kind of just what people like to say to Discredit justify it. the paranormal phenomenon instead of actually figuring out what it is. Lazy, lazy. All right, now let's get into something crazy that we mentioned in the introduction of something that Mothman supposedly predicted, or maybe he was trying to warn us about, or maybe he brought this on the people of Point Pleasant. We're not sure. But the sightings of Mothman continued on until December of 1967, about a year later when Point Pleasant's Silver Bridge collapsed. This collapse resulted in 36 cars and trucks falling into the river and 46 deaths due to the freezing temperatures of the water. There were rescue attempts, but not many successful rescue attempts. Now, this horrible incident started the legend that connected Mothman to the bridge collapse. And people started, you know, looking back on the weeks before the bridge collapsed and said that they felt a general sense of unease. I feel like just bridge collapses are just a pretty nightmare fuelish. Like, I feel like everyone has has at least one point in time thought about what am I going to do with this bridge oh, collapses? Oh, I used to think about that all the time. I think it also because my mom can't swim. So as a kid, I used to be like, what do I do? <laughs> you know? Well, I think she probably could swim. Well, you know what I mean, though. But as a kid, I didn't like understand that like we just know how to swim. Don't we know someone that doesn't drive over bridges? Yeah. And I'm not sure how real these photos are. I'll show them on the screen now. But it's said that a week before the disaster, two photos were taken by people passing in the area that saw a bat-like creature near the bridge. And the photos are pretty creepy, let me tell you. Some say that Mothman was an omen of impending doom and that Mothman appears in cities to, you know, I guess warn us of disaster, even though it never actually warns anyone. It just freaks people out. <laughs> And literally doesn't prevent the disaster. So maybe they're bringing the disaster. Maybe Mothman is crazy. You know? Maybe he wants destruction of humans. After the bridge collapsed, the sightings stopped. So whether or not this is because people's attention was off of Mothman, and so people weren't, like, concocting these memories of seeing a bat or an owl, Mothman, whatever, they were distracted by the fact that a bridge collapsed in their town, or did the Mothman finish his job and was like, peace, on to the next. Comment down below what you think, I guess. <laughs> okay. Now, do you know who John Keel is? No. He was an American journalist and ufologist that spent months interviewing people who allegedly saw the Mothman. I think he even was the guy that invented the term uh, men in black, perhaps. No kidding. Uh, we actually have an episode on that. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. Uh, That's a good one. Click it up there somewhere. I'll link something. And John Keel's book on Mothman was published in 1975, and he includes interviews from a lot of different people that saw Mothman, allegedly, including this one guy who was a contractor who claimed that his dog actually went missing because of Mothman. It was a German shepherd that kept like barking outside and it was it vanished forever, basically. Um, he also said that he started having headaches, paranoia, cryptic messages on his voicemail machine. He also pointed out that his TV was making weird buzzing noises and stuff. So a lot of weird things happened to this guy and a lot of other people and they told John Keel about it and he talked about it in his book, so... And in 2002, this book by John Keel actually turned into a movie. And this is kind of what, uh, you know, made this spooky West Virginia legend blow up a little bit more. But now that we talked a little bit about John Keel and his book, now let's get into the anti-John Keelers. I'm, I'm calling them that. I made that up. 
John Keeler's. His name's John Keeler. I don't know. Okay. I'm, wear- I'm wearing a butterfly shirt, but we're going to pretend Butterflies it's a Mothman. Butterflies aren't moths. Okay, but this is the only relevant thing I had because someone wore my Mothman costume. No, this is my size. <laughs> no, this is my Mothman costume. Okay. It is. Okay. <laughs> Folklorist Jan Harald Brunvond notes that Mothman has been widely covered in the popular press, some claiming sightings connected with UFOs and others claiming that a military storage site was Mothman's home. And he notes that recountings of the 1966-1967 Mothman reports usually state that at least 100 people saw Mothman, with many more, quote, afraid to report their sightings. But observe that written sources for such stories consisted of children's books or sensationalized or undocumented accounts that failed to, quote, identifiable people. So he's basically saying that John Keel's book has over 100 people's whatever, but these are not actually all legit. Legit. Bronvon was also finding some commonalities in the different Mothman reports and much older folk tales, suggesting that something real may have triggered the scares and became woven with existing folklore in people's, you know, minds. Like maybe they saw a crane or something and then they remembered something back from a story that they read as a kid and something got jumbled up up there. Hence the crazy reports of Mothman. In the May 2002 issue of Skeptical Inquirer, journalist John C. Sherwood, a former business associate of UFO researcher Gray Barker, published an article titled Gray Barker's Book of Bunk. Now you say that 10 times fast. Gray Barker's Book of Bunk. Gray Barker's Book of Bunk. <laughs> and this book of bunk contained an analysis of private letters between Keel. John Keel, the paranormal ufologist guy, and Barker during the period of Keel's investigation. According to Sherwood, Keel wrote in 1967 that people in the New York area were receiving mysterious phone calls from a woman who identified herself as Mrs. Gray Barker. (laughs) So he's claiming that there's this woman named Mrs. Gray Barker. Meanwhile, he's writing with a UFO researcher named Gray Barker, and he was his associate. So, like, did he... Okay, but if you're going to make up a name, wouldn't you think of, like, a name that's not your associate's name that's also a UFO researcher? So, do you think it was just a coincidence that they had the same name? I don't know. Sherwood said that he contacted John Keel in 2001, asking him to assist in clarifying the discrepancy, as well as to defend the book's thesis. Sherwood said that Keel declined, citing a recent eye surgery and eventually stopped replying to Sherwood's letters. Oh. Sounds like, uh, what's his face? Left Paul him on red, David baby. Politis, or what's his name? Paul Davidis? What? David Politis? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> All right. Remember, I feel like people were writing him letters and he was just like... Nah. Oh, wait. Or was it the Bigfoot thing? Maybe it was the Bigfoot thing. Sorry. There's also the radioactivity theory of why Mothman is Mothman. <laughs> uh, the spot where Mothman was first sighted was referred to as the TNT area because it was a factory that used to produce explosives during World War II. But after the war, these types of factories were abandoned, despite the fact that TNT was reportedly still being stored on site and contaminating the environment. It was noted that it was also a dumping ground for toxic waste and dangerous chemicals, and that this area also had a lot of previous UFO sightings. So perhaps some radioactivity made a... I don't know, giant crane turn into this creature? People like to point out that wild dogs at Chernobyl are evolving faster than other dogs uh, because of radiation making their DNA different. Now, after Mothman disappeared from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, people thought Mothman was gone forever. However, he or she or what they were not. Eight years later, Mothman was supposedly back in Binghamton, New York. In 1975, a group of children reported seeing a man with bat wings and glowing red eyes. I have the visibility of a grandma right now. Take it off. It's like 150 degrees. Um, okay. Oh no, my wings. According to a Georgian newspaper, Russian ufologists claim that Mothman sightings in Moscow foreshadowed the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. People also claimed that a black large bird was flying around Chernobyl and people were having nightmares and people were getting phone calls that they couldn't explain up until the Chernobyl explosion. People also say that Mothman sightings are associated with the Minneapolis bridge collapse, La Junta, Mexico in 2009. People even go as far to claim that Mothman was seen at the Twin Towers, (laughs) which is a little crazy. Uh Uh-oh. And I feel like the Mothman was not there, but 
Witnesses allegedly saw a creature flying parallel to the plane during the attack. And then in the days that followed, those who reported seeing the beast allegedly encountered men in black who warned them to keep their stories to themselves. This is another anecdote or occurrence that happened with people that saw Mothman, even in Point Pleasant, West Virginia as well. Many claim that after seeing Mothman and reporting it, that men in black followed them or were following them or talked to them. So men in black have some association with Mothman, according to a lot of people. But these incidents of Mothman being reported in other cities is not as, you know, reputable as Point Pleasant, West Virginia. But I do have to say that there's one city, to me, even more reputable than Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and that is Chicago. Eyewitnesses in Chicago reported seeing the same thing, even though these eyewitnesses did not know each other. I'm going to read something from an article that I found on Chicago sightings of Mothman. It was a normal summer night for John Amatrano working a Friday shift as security for Chicago's popular Logan Square hangout, The Owl. Coincidence? I think not. But when we went outside, he saw something odd. I saw a plane flying, but also something moving really awkwardly under it, he told Vice. It didn't look like a bat so much as what illustrations of pterodactyls look like. Is that what it's called? Pterod yeah, a pterodactyl. Pterosaur. With the slenderness of its head and its wing shape. I know what birds and what bats look like. This thing didn't have any feathers or fur, and it didn't fly like anything I've ever seen. Amatrano added that the thing he saw, which according to him had muscular legs, a jutting tailbone, and a human-like shape, flew in a strange swooping motion, undulating up and down. After it flew away, he retrieved his phone from charging in the bar and texted his girlfriend and close friends what had happened. I remember thinking, this was the worst time in the world to have my phone charging, he laughed. What Amatrano saw that night was one of 55 reported Chicago area sightings of a flying humanoid in 2017. Accounts have varied from a large black bat-like being with glowing red eyes to a big owl or something that resembled a gothic gargoyle or a mothman. Most eyewitnesses spotted the being in flight, but some particularly disturbing reports detailed it dropping onto hoods of cars, peering in through windows, and swooping down at bystanders. Oh, man. Imagine. Oh, my God. Life would never be the same. Did you know like, when you smush a moth, it leaves like dust? Ew, yeah. I wonder if there's dust on the car. <gasps> I wonder if before Mothman's a Mothman, if he's a maggot. Or maggot man. Larva. <laughs> larva. Larva man. It's like a <laughs> the massive <babies>. worm. <laughs> Ew. The alleged Mothman has captured the attention of the city from local media articles and rap songs to Halloween costumes. And now there's countless speculative Facebook groups. Why haven't I joined one? I'm just thinking of doing that now. The group of sightings is known to be historical and cryptozoology terms. For one, it's happening in an urban area for the most part. And there are so many sightings of Mothman in Chicago that... This is just iconic, honestly. There's a website called, um, what is it called? What's it called? Phantomsandmonsters.com. And it's an interactive map and website which has emails, phone calls, witnesses, stories. And this guy just collects all of these of Mothman. That's a passion. And other, other phantoms and monsters, I guess. But there's specifically a Mothman page um, that showcases especially like the Chicago sightings because, you know, they're more recent in 2017, not 1967 or whatever. But the creator of the website actually believes that there are at least three flying humanoids around Chicago due to the varied locations, the concentration of sightings in certain areas in Chicago and neighborhoods, and the small differences in the eyewitness testimonies. So he thinks that there are three out there. Crazy. And a lot of these sightings have actually been around O'Hare Airport and by employees of O'Hare Airport. Obviously, they're probably looking in the sky a bit more being around an airport. Airport security officers often report seeing Mothman. For example, December 3rd in 2019, a large person standing down in the creek bed, man tur turned towards me and I saw two bright red eyes. So this is according to a Chicago O'Hare security guard, security officer. Even pilots have seen Mothman, allegedly. Uh, August 2019, a pilot saw one at O'Hare Airport. Someone on the air traffic control team also saw Mothman and knows three other traffic controllers that work at O'Hare that have also seen Mothman. Isn't that crazy, kind of? That is crazy. Mothman gets around. But a psychologist has to ruin it for everyone. Uh, University of Chicago, David Gallo, said... 
55 sightings of Mothman in Chicago during 2017. 55 pu- sightings of Mothman. In- <laughs> 55 published on the website of self-described Fortean researcher Lon Strickler are a, quote, selective sample. Oh, please. Leave it to the academics. Have you ever had a fun professor? I know. No. He explains that he's not sampling random people and asking if they saw the Mothman. He's just counting the number of people that voluntarily came forward to report a sighting. Obviously, it's not seen often, bro. Like, you're not going to just find people on the street. You're not going to just... What is this guy... What is he supposed to stand at the corner of Michigan Avenue and just ask every single person that walks by him, Hey, have you seen Mothman? Have you seen Moth... They'll think he's crazy. Not that he is, Phantoms and Monsters. We're not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm dressed up as a moth, dressed up (laughs) as an alien. We're not crazy. I just had an, wearing yellow Crocs. I just had an existential crisis. One second, I need need some of my drink. What is it? Oh, (laughs) oh, I thought you actually had something. No, I wish thirsty no i'm so thirsty and our next sponsor just kidding someone send us drinks kool-aid fuck you dale wood kool-aid we get sponsored by kool-aid because jim jones (laughs) the only relevant drink company and liquid death but they didn't they didn't reply to my email okay so whatever i'm not even gonna read the rest of the psychologist's claim that takes strickler you know who do you think you are you think you're a psychologist at university oh wait you should strictly stay to psychology yeah. You According, get the pun? Okay, so. Oh, yeah, stick. I said. Strict, I thought you said strickler. strickler. Yeah, strickler. To, so yeah. you should strictly. Ah, that's funny. Ah. According to Gallo, the people more likely to visit a paranormal centric website like Strickler's might also be more inclined to believe in and therefore witness the existence of a Mothman. I think by that he basically means that people like us are more likely to fake seeing one and fake report one whoa, whoa, Bitch, whoa, whoa, i would like whoa. to tell you that i believe in mothman and i wouldn't just report it i know better because i know that the false claims and the pranks and the hoaxes like crop circles those are the one that d uh what's the word d demean demean <laughs> like yeah, value i guess the Real ones. How low of a life do you have to be to falsely report cryptids? All the people that do that are NPCs, um, and they were hired by aliens and extraterrestrials or ultra-terrestrials to throw us, throw humans off their track. Uh, our track, yeah. To get the normies. Yeah, get them normies. To be like, oh, that's stupid. People who believe in that are crazy, you know? Oh, but Strickler replied. Okay, let's go, Strickler. He doesn't buy that explanation. We have had very few cranks from what I can tell, which I think is pretty unusual. If the media would have picked up on it more than it has, I think that we would have had more fraudulent sightings. But it hasn't, I guess. Quickly, I just wanted to talk about the importance of Mothman on Point Pleasant's uh, economy, I guess, and its impact on its tourism. So there's an annual festival in Point Pleasant devoted to the Mothman legend, and they held their first annual Mothman festival back in 2002, the same year that that movie based on John Keel's book was released. People in Point Pleasant were brainstorming creative ways to get other people to visit Point Pleasant, and the Mothman was their answer. Because of the Mothman's uniqueness and as a way to celebrate its local legacy in the town. According to the event organizer, Jeff Wamsley, the average attendance for the Mothman Festival is an estimated 10 to 12,000 people per year. That's actually huge. That is a lot of people. I want to go. That'd be pretty fun. West Virginia, I've never been, but my great-great-grandma, who was a moonshiner, was born there and lived there. <laughs> that did not rhyme. What a sin, what a sin. West Virginia, never been. What a sin. What, what a, a sin. sin. Grandma made some moonshine gin. What a sin. Okay. Wow. No. I should start a whole cryptids album. Okay, moving on. A 12 foot tall metallic statue was made in honor of Mothman, and you can see it if you go to Point Pleasant. There was a Mothman Museum and Research Center that opened in 2005. Would love to go. We should do a whole Mothman tour. Let's go. Museum. But what else is down in like West Virginia? It's I don't know. Maybe sell. my great grandma was buried there. Okay. <laughs> tough sell. <gasps> the festival is held on the third weekend of every September. Shit. Pancake eating contests. 
guest speakers, vendor exhibits, hayride tours of locally notable areas. Local notable, maybe the TNT area. You can see you see some real shit go down. I want to show you guys phantomsandmonsters.com. Chicago Lake Michigan winged humanoid flying entity sightings and encounters map. So it has all of the sightings. Oh, here's a photo. Second Mothman bat-like object witnessed over Chicago. Someone took a photo of it, it looks like. That does not look like a crane. That does look like a bat of some sort. Or like a Moth. drone or something. Oh, a dr- that's a big-ass drone, though. Wow. So it has each of the stories and the accompanying photos that um, the witness took if they were able to do so and their phone wasn't charging like that one guy. Ooh, breaking. Pair of large bat-like humanoids downtown Chicago. May 21st, 2017. Was out of the breakwater with my best friend and her boyfriend. We were waiting for my boyfriend to finish helping his dad tie their boat to the dock after helping him bring the boat to the marina for the summer. We were standing on the shore by some picnic tables waiting on James to meet us there. We were talking when we heard this loud James. screech. It sounded completely out of this world. And after a couple of seconds, we heard another one, only louder and higher pitched than the first one. We looked around thinking we had heard an animal in distress and if it needed help. That's when we saw this large bat fly into our view. It was black and came from the direction of the bridge that holds up the Lakeshore Drive. It flew low and then shot up into the air as it came over the water. We noticed one of the Coast Guard helicopters was flying over the water at about the same time, but we're not sure if it saw this thing as it kept on flying toward the Adler Planetarium. This thing flew a large circle and cried out again, and almost instantly it was joined by another large bat. These things were big and stood out against the sky. They flew figure eights around each other. It looked like they were dancing in a strange sort of way. It was actually quite beautiful considering how freaking strange it was. About that time, my boyfriend walked up on us and scared the living bejesus out of us. Both myself and my friend screamed. I think the large bats hurt us because they screeched back at each other and flew down toward the water. It looked like they were going to slam into the water, and at the last second, they pulled up and flew toward, and I'm assuming under the bridge and out of sight. We ran toward the railing to look down the river and saw nothing else. This entire encounter lasted about one and a half to two minutes. It was scary only because we didn't know what the hell they were, but it looked like they were interested in each other and not us. We can't be the only ones to see it as the river walk and the pier were full of people people and joggers are these things just giant bats or are there gargoyles or just people in those wingsuit thingies <laughs> they do look like wingsuiters but i don't think that's uh, a like thing they're in just downtown screeching and flying around <laughs> diving up and down i don't think so honestly though if i was a wingsuiter i would go mess with people so that was just one of the countless reports on phantomsandmonsters.com. Highly recommend reading some if you are interested in Mothman or you just, you know, want to read some for the hell of it. So that is it for Mothman. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, like because we post videos every single week here on Cauldron Convos, and comment anything relevant to Mothman, cryptids, paranormal, or just if you want to say, hey, my underwear has a hole in it. That's fine too. Anyways, thanks guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time here on College of Convos. Bye. Bye. Mothman out. <laughs>